you. I'm sure there's some of you out there who have had that experience when you're just coming up on something and you're like, uh, and you're like clinging to something to save you. You just like, you need something to like center your mind and get in that Zen. And then once you're in that Zen, you're like, okay, I, I got it. Like, I got this. This is good. Like this, I can enjoy this now. It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yo, what up? Back with another one today. Wing King doing his thing thing. It's a special one because if you look in the pile right here situated in front of us, you'll see that there's no drums. It's another all flats, baby. This one is not done like a breaded and fried. This is just a crispy oil uh, air fryer, 40 minutes, 400 degrees, naked crispy salt featuring four dips okay we'll get into those in a second but of course before we do anything more we must pour so we've got our perfect iceberg right here ready to roll and we've got a brand new fresh from the corner store diet dr p coming to save a life i feel like i'm so ready for one of these i honestly can't remember last time i had a little dr p action I'm sure it hasn't been very long knowing me in my life, but I feel like we haven't poured one up here in just a little bit. So very excited to get into this because it's really cold and fresh and beautiful and bubbly. And also should be another banger due to the fact that I got a story time today I'm going to tell you. And that is, I think it was like my third time ever doing mushrooms and just kind of how it all played out. This, the uh, just some funniness of it. I don't know that it's the most insane tale, but it at least should be somewhat entertaining. And some of you might have had some relatable experiences, uh, you know, dealing with psychedelics or drugs or being on the influence of something that alters the state of your mind. So, sip it. Mm. That's that extra fresh recipe today. Okay, so we get ready to dip it. And we have Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue. We have my stepmother's homemade yellow pepper jelly. Ranch, of course, but I got some carrots back here. That's more of a palate cleanser. And then I whipped up this like creamy honey Dijon. So kind of like a honey mustard, but like a creamy Dijon honey mustard. First place I want to go is to this yellow pepper jelly because I feel like it's going to be so good. A little spicy, predominantly sweet with some authentic pepper flavor in there. Just a thin a wing needs. Mm. These are perfect. As suspected. The pepper jelly. Super on point. Works perfectly. I just heat it up in the pan a little bit just to get it warm. Mm. Definitely a first on wings. I've never had a pepper jelly before on wings, but I tell you what, it works. Okay, next up, this Dijon honey mustard creamy. I'm intrigued to know, also a first time.
I just put Dijon, honey, mayo, a little bit of salt. And the tiniest squeeze of lemon juice. Kills it. <clears throat> I just want to try one of everything. Then get to the story. This is two packs from the store. And I'm sure it's over two pounds. Probably two and a half. Sweet baby. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the raise is where it's at. I would say there's probably 30 flats here for sure. For 10 bucks. That's why you make wings at home, my friends. Because getting them <clears throat> at restaurants or pubs, just such a waste of money. We can make them just as good at home. If not better. For a third of the cost. Okay. Let's tell you a story about this mushrooms trip that I had. I think I was 16 or 17. And, uh... <clears throat> If you guys have been with me long enough, especially lately, now that I'm back uh, where I'm originally from, I've talked about how I had like a camp, summer home or whatever you want to call it, out on <clears throat> Lake Superior. And that I would spend my summers up there, two, three months at a time. Um, out there during those months, there was always other families with camps and, uh, you know, you would meet kids at swimming and sports and shit. And then you just gather up. Like a crew, summer crew. So we had a pretty deep summer crew. And the kid that lived up the street or up the dirt road from me, his parents were balling. And they had it all. Huge place. Pool in a deck. Cabana. Like a bar. The uh, sauna, showers, just like a general hangout space. Pretty much designed for the kids. To enjoy their life in the summer. Parents were up top, like in the main house usually. So on this particular day, our crew 
like I said, about eight to ten of us. We've all been smoking weed for a couple of years at this point. And um, a few of us have done mushrooms and stuff. I, I, at this point, had done mushrooms like two times. And we all decide, some of us who haven't done mushrooms, some of us who had, and we all decide that night, like, yo, let's all pitch in and get a bag of mush and like trip out. But we're out like 45 minutes or an hour away from town. No dealers out where we are selling mushrooms. So we all started brainstorming about like, okay, who do we know who deals weed? Who might know somebody who deals mushrooms? We finally get connected to this guy. Week actually turns out we know him. He's like a senior at a few of our high schools. A few of us went to the same high school. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I have an ounce. I can sell you but I gotta charge you to drive out 50 bucks. We're like, sure, whatever. So we pulled our money. Dude drives out. Hands us like the fullest, fattest Ziploc bag of mushrooms. Like could have used it as a pillow. <laughs> So we're all just sitting there like, holy shit, that's actually way more than we thought. So <clears throat> we got a few pizzas because there's a local store there, like restaurant and store that sells pizza. So we went and got a few pizzas and then sat down by the pool in the cabana, ate them with pizza, a couple grams each, I knew to keep it to like two, two and a half, just because of my previous experiences, and my previous experiences were always kind of, they ended up always being good, but in the beginning, when you're first coming up on the high, that's when it just gets a little dicey. It gets a little difficult to accept the high and let go. Especially think with things like psychedelics are gonna last for hours. So we do the mushroom. Um, it's getting dark and down beside the pool, like lower, there's like this, this shale rock beach where the waves come in off the lake. And that's where his fire pit was set up. We got the fire pit loaded, sit on the benches. None of us are zooming yet. We still haven't fully come up. <clears throat> and uh, we get the fire lit. And you can tell that everybody's starting to come up. Everybody's starting to be different. Kind of going a little bit quiet. A little bit weird. And mine are coming on. And there's this thing, if you've ever done mushrooms or psychedelics, you can kind of just feel this like buzzing energy and like reality just start to like feel different it just changes I don't know how to explain it but <clears throat> if you know you know there's just like this vibrational energy in your being you start seeing things like differently so 
So that's coming on. And I'm like, a bit of a control freak, obviously. Like when it's, I don't, I just, I, I was always that way with drugs. I always had a hard time letting myself go into the experience, right? So I was like not resisting. I was like not really resisting per se, but I just needed like a grace period to get into it. And my buddy, the guy that owned the place at the time, he had, or well, his parents, a mini disc player. It was like around the time of like MP3s, CD players, I think. I think many of these players were after CD players. It's like this little floppy disk cartridge that has a small CD in it. And you load it into the disc player and kind of shut like that. Um, so we had this mini disc player. I was like, yo man, I'm kind of tripping right now. I'm like, I just need something to like take my mind off this. Like, can I listen to your mini disc player? And he's like, sure man, here, here you go. And at this point, Everybody else decided we're going swimming. And I was like, I can't hack swimming right now. Like I need to zen out and deal with my high before I trip right out. So they all decided to leave me and go swimming. I'm left alone sitting at this fire like paranoid schizophrenic, like on the edge of a freak out, basically just trying to like, you know, reel my shit in. And accept being high. And I'm scrolling through his uh, mini disc songs. He had just a mix of randomly downloaded stuff. And I stumbled upon <clears throat> this song, this beat starts playing, I've never heard before. I'll link the song down below. It's called Proceed With Caution by Benefit, this white rapper named Benefit who never made it as a rapper. But he had a few like internet, YouTube big songs this, and this one's called Proceed With Caution. So this is back when I'm like into Eminem and like really rapidly rap. And this dude's just spitting. The beat is so sick. Proceed with caution. <laughs> so in this moment, I'm locked in. I'm like, holy shit, I'm saved. Like this, this, mu this one song just took over my high and like flipped the switch into it being like good. I was now enjoying my high. So I'm just sitting there watching these flames and I could like zoom into the flames with my eyes. I could like zoom in and out. And I shit you not, I played the song for two hours straight. Over, over, over. By the end of the session, I'm me tripping balls trying to save myself with this song. And like, Gazing into the fire, I knew every lyric, bar for bar. <laughs> Meanwhile, where I'm seated, I can see up to like the pool and the cabana. And we used to do this thing where we would climb the side of the cabana and just we would like run and jump into the pool, pool and cannonball. So it's kind of dark, but we got the fire and stuff, and the boys were out there. Busting off flips and shit into the pool, but like I didn't see them as humans, <laughs> I couldn't like make out their shape. So I'm just like tripping to the song, the flames. I see like these energy balls going into like water, and then the water splash. And was like, 
like really colorful and soft and like it just I don't know I was just I was like mesmerized so I finally was in a good enough place to go up and join the people who were like already all good and let themselves just be high at which point we got this idea to play like Predator. So kind of like High and Go Seek, but it was like one person's the Predator and the rest of us are prey. And then, you know, we're out at like a camp and there's all these wooded areas and decks and all these places to like kind of hide. But you also, you don't like hide per se. You move around, like you're rolling and you, uh, you kind of watch the predator and the predator tries to find you and then you get stalked until you get caught so you get tagged and then you have to go lay in the middle of the the grass with all like the dead prey until the last guy's caught and when you're high as fuck on a mushrooms that shit felt crazy <laughs> Like getting chased down and trying to evade and it felt like you were actually like getting hunted <laughs> but it was mad fun once i got to the place of accepting my high you know I've always been really bad with accepting my high on, on certain things. That's why I kind of just got to a point with weed and psychedelics that I was just like, um, I'm not built for this shit. I wish I could enjoy them, but... Cause it seems so fun and like mind, mind opening, altering, enjoying, but I just struggle with the control aspect of it. And I've seen that go extremely bad in a bunch of cases with friends who are just not prepared. To handle it and just flip right out run away disappear go to the hospital <laughs> like all these things and all they're gonna do is to put you in a room and make you wait it out anyways. That's another thing about shrooms that I never really liked was the come down or coming off them. Super weird. You just feel really strange. For quite a while after. Not as bad as an MDMA come down though, I'll tell you that. MDMA come downs are terrible. Legitimately feel brain dead.
everything comes with a price. If you're going to go up, you have to expect to come down. That's a yin yang, the one zero of life in full effect when you do drugs. Every action has a reaction and or consequence. And with drugs and alcohol, the second half fucking sucks. <laughs> I can tell you that for free. Like I said in that other wing video, these are the ones you gotta work at. Got an awe. <laughs> Probably my favorite way though, to be honest. So yeah, not the most nuts drug story by any stretch of the imagination, but just a little fun tale, thought you may enjoy. Uh, just brought back some memories for me and it may be a little bit relatable for, for you. I'm sure there's some of you out there who have had that experience when you're just coming up on something and you're like, uh, and you're like clinging to something to save you. You just like, you need something to like center your mind and get in that Zen. And then once you're in that Zen, you're like, okay, I, I got it. Like, I got this. This is good. Like this, I can enjoy this now instead of being like, you know, combative against that, like frequency and energy, you know, initially. So those were delicious. Crushed the whole pile. I hope you enjoyed till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well, and stay true.